Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I hope all of you are staying out there safe and healthy, which is by far the most important thing. But in today's BA series video, we're going to talk about how to review your requirements with key stakeholders and how to keep track of them throughout different iterations or phases of an implementation. So if you're somebody who's already subscribed to my channel, then you're fully aware that in previous videos, I talked about the different types of requirements, as well as how to give estimates like an expert, uh, and also how to prioritize them. So the next step uh, in that sequence is how to review the requirements to make sure that there's no gaps and to close any misunderstanding or any uncertainties or something that you need to clarify with your key stakeholders before you move on to the next phase, which is building uh, the actual product or service that you need to deliver. So a lot of you might be asking, what exactly is the point? Why do we need to review the requirements? And basically the goal of the requirements is to make sure that we meet the business goals and objectives, so that we're not missing anything, that we didn't overlook anything to make sure that we all understand that to our best ability, that we've identified all the requirements that are required to create this product or service. Let's say for example, my customer asked me to create a new interface to make his purchasing and receiving uh, process a little bit more smooth. So they recently implemented a handheld device where they can scan the receive the receiving orders with the scanner. And basically he wants me to create a new interface to make sure that, you know, it can identify the purchase orders and then match that in the system. So then it reduces the manual work and interference. And then basically it'll be a seamless operation process. So far as a business analyst, I actually went and talked to a number of key stakeholders, including end users and subject matter experts and identified a number of requirements. Uh, for example, this is a brand new interface that's never existed in the system before. It has to be in CSV format. It also has to include a number of information regarding the purchase orders, as well as the receiving orders and some of the product names and identification. And I've also identified that it has to be dropped in a secure server uh, with encrypted information to make sure that security is not breached. And I also know that uh, they want this interface to be on a, to be scheduled, automatically scheduled on a daily basis. So far, this is an example of the requirements that I was able to identify as a business analyst throughout this elicitation and ident identifying requirements stage. And now I have to make sure that these requirements are documented and then that we actually sit down with our key stakeholders to review them to make sure that I didn't miss anything, nothing got lost in translation, and that we are all on the same page. So some of the key things you have to remember is your audience and you have to make sure that all of your key stakeholders are present when you're reviewing these requirements. You don't want to miss anybody who could provide valuable feedback to you, right? So this, this can include, um, you know, end users who are going to use your product or service once it's delivered. It could also be subject matter experts. It could also be any type of um, team members who've been involved in the project implementation. And it's really important for you to have this review session because the cost of not doing so greatly outweighs the cost of doing a review session. So this is the final checkpoint where we can ask questions and identify any gaps before we actually move forward, which is the designing and building stage of the project. And if you miss this step, let's say, for example, if you miss a requirement, the cost of fixing that mi mistake or, you know, somebody overlooking that requirement is a lot more expensive down the road once you start building something. So that's the, that's the reason why it's so critical to have review sessions before you sign off on your documents and say, we're good to go is precisely the reason why we do review sessions is to make sure that we minimize the risk of 
further delaying the project or missing a requirement and delivering something that the customer didn't ask for. So as some of you might remember, I've actually shared this diagram with you in one of my previous videos, but I thought it would be a great example to bring it up again because um, essentially reviewing your requirements is to prevent something like this from happening. So the purpose of review sessions is that we get as close to as possible between what the customer really needed it and how the analyst interprets it or designs it before the programmer actually goes in and start building something. Oftentimes, one of the biggest challenges is that customers themselves don't exactly know or understand exactly what they're looking for until they have the final product. But, but by then, it's, it's already too late and it's way too costly to go back and fix it. And so this is, what, this is why our role as a business analyst is so critical, is to make sure that you know, we are proactive in ensuring that we capture all the requirements, we ask the right questions, we probe the customers and try to get to as close to as possible what they're really looking for. Prior to setting up a review meeting, you should think about the scope as well as a checklist of items that you want to cover and send it to all the key stakeholders prior to the meeting so then they can come to the meeting prepared. So what I mean by scope is that sometimes I've been to some review meetings where they have so many people from different areas of the business because they want this one big session where they go through everything together. I don't necessarily think that's the most effective way of handling or conducting a review meeting. I think it should be more specific with, you know, very smaller group of targeted audience who really know what their businesses are, what their business process looks like, or, you know, who can actually speak to what the end product should look like. So during the actual review session, I found that the more visualized it is, the more effective. So for example, as a software implementation consultant, oftentimes when they ask for uh, special uh, enhancements or um, specific features or functionality, I'll try to set up set up the new process or the new workflow in the demo just to kind of demonstrate and walk the customers through what kind of changes um, are going to happen as a result of that change because customers don't actually think about the end result or how much impact it's going to have on their businesses, right? So I remember one time they were asking me to set up additional chains of approvals for their purchase orders. And then I, you know, my initial reaction was I didn't want to do that because I already knew that their management were bombarded with so many emails. And if you add additional chain chains of approvals or command, it can actually really impact your uh, operations and slow things down. But I didn't want to say anything. So basically what I did was I set up additional workflows that they were asking me and I show them uh, during my review session, during the walkthrough, and then it really helped them to uh, see how much additional time that it's going to take. And sometimes that their middle managers can become their bottlenecks because they're all waiting for these additional approvals from them, right? So this was a very helpful way for them to kind of get an understanding of what could be the you know pros and cons and uh, they actually decided to go back and stay with their previous um, approvals as a result. Once you facilitate the review sessions, following up on them and documenting them is even more critical than just having a review session itself. Issues should be recorded either in a issue tracking system if you have one or you can just use you know, good old Excel spreadsheet and then just keep it manually and then make sure you document them so that you don't forget about them. And then you can also set up review uh, follow up meetings on a weekly or daily basis, depending on what your preference is or how urgent it needs to be resolved. And then you also need to assign it to um, specific person and give them a deadline to kind of 
make sure that you know they get resolved and um, to hold them really accountable. If some issues don't get resolved within a certain period of time or they need additional support, then it can often get escalated. So you can work with your project manager uh, or with your superior on how to es how to escalate issues. But basically, you need to make sure that you keep track of them so then you can escalate them if additional resources are required or somebody you know else from a different department needs to basically get involved to resolve that issue as well. So here you can also rank and prioritize different uh, types of issues that come out of this review session. And I actually created a whole video on how to prioritize items. So I'm not gonna go into too much details, but you can definitely um, check out this video and then see you know, what are some of the ideas that you can use or techniques that you can use to basically prioritize different types of issues that you have. So that's it for today's uh, BA video on how to review requirements and keep track of your issues. If you have any tips that worked well for you in the past, feel free to share them in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!